In this video, we're going to cover subcontracting, and we're going to look at all the journal entries that get created when working on subcontracted products. Now, the concept of subcontracting is pretty straightforward. However, the product moves and the journal entries could be a little complex if you're not used to it. The first thing we need to do is in inventory, we need to make sure that we have subcontracting enabled. So we're going to search subcontracting, and under operations and manufacturing, we're going to check the subcontracting box so that we can install the submodules for subcontracting. What that's going to do is install and allow us to select some routes as well as enable us to select subcontracting on a bill of material as well as a vendor on a product. Inside of our products we've created two products. We have an unfinished product and a finished product. Now this unfinished product can be anything. It can be any raw material. For the purpose of this, this example, I want to make it clear that we are sending out an unfinished product to our vendor, and in return, we're going to get a new product that's going to be a finished good. Now for our unfinished product, we're going to click into it. It's going to be a storable product, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. We have a cost price, and we have this in our product category, average cost, with automated inventory valuation. Under our inventory tab, the route selected on this product is a buy route and a resupply the subcontractor on order route. These are default inventory routes that Odoo provides for us. Now the purpose of this course is not to teach routes, but we're gonna talk about them a little bit just because that's how we're going to complete our workflow. Now on finished products here, this on finished product, we're going to buy this from a vendor. This is just a raw material, but we could have also manufactured this as well. And we also have this resupply route selected. And what that tells the system is that when I use this in a bill of material and a bill of material is subcontracted, we are going to resupply our subcontractor with this unfinished product. So therefore, when we need this finished product, which we created here, it has a bill of material associated with it that is a subcontracted bill of material, which contains the unfinished product. And we're going to ship out our unfinished product to the vendor. The vendor in this case is our subcontractor. They're going to do some work on it and return us a finished product. So let's take a look at the bill of material. Our bill of material is very straightforward. We have a finished good. The bomb type is subcontracting. Our subcontractors is set to vendor one, but this can be many different subcontractors. And the components is going to be one component, which is this unfinished product. So we need to make sure we have this unfinished product in stock so we can resupply our vendor. So let's do that first. Under our purchase tab, we're going to create a new PO and we'll do this from vendor one and we'll purchase our unfinished product for $50. So let's confirm our order, receive our products in, validate this. We're going to create our bill. We're going to set a bill date as usual and just simply confirm this for now. So now we have one raw material in of that unfinished product and we can double check under reporting. We can go to our evaluation and we see our unfinished product. We have one unit for $50. And if we look at our stock on hand, we can see we have unfinished product. We have one unit on hand. So now the next thing we wanna do, we need an, a finished product. So how do we get that finished product? Well. We purchase it from our vendor via a subcontracting. So let's do that. We can simply click the replenish button here, which will create a PO for us. So let's do that. We're going to buy this from vendor one. So let's confirm and we'll see our PO number 16 is created. We'll go into purchase orders here and look at that PO. Now I don't have a unit price set on my product, so I'm just going to set one manually. But I want to explain something first. Now this finished product is a finished good, it's a storable product that costs some amount of money to get from our vendor. Let's say that we have an on finished good, which we do. Maybe our subcontractor is going to add paint to it. They own the paint, they're just going to paint it and send us back our finished good. And that's going to essentially be a service that they're rendering to us. So, in this scenario, let's say that that entire service that they're offering costs us $50. Or actually, let's do 100 just for the sake of this. 
So the finished goods service, whatever our vendor is providing us costs $100. But there are also costs associated with the raw material, that unfinished good that we need to send them. So we're going to look at those journal entries as well. So as soon as we confirm this order with our vendor, the system is going to automatically create a new operation that we need to complete, which is a resupply subcontractor. So the first step in this is to resupply the subcontractor, our unfinished good, so they can begin working on it. So here we're just going to validate this document. And no journal entries were created at this point so far. This is essentially an internal transfer that's a delivery. So if I go into inventory and I look at my stock, we see our unfinished good. We have no usable inventory right now, but if we go to valuation and we look at our unfinished product, we still have that value sitting in our unfinished product of $50 because we still own that currently. Just because we sent it out to our vendor, it's still our inventory. Now, if we look at our stock moves, so let's go to move history here. We see that we sent our unfinished product to a physical location, which is a subcontracting location. And if we go into locations and we look at that subcontracting location, that is an internal location, meaning we own that inventory. All right. So no journal entries created so far, besides purchasing our raw material. So the next step is for our vendor to work on that product. So they can go ahead and begin working on that product. And once they are completing or they completed working on the product, they will let us know, send us back the finished good. And we're going to have a receipt here to receive the finished good, as well as record the components utilized in making that finished good. And if we click on our subcontracting here, we'll see that this is set to consume one unfinished product. So this could have been many products as well. Now I do want to mention, even though it's not part of this course, is that our vendor one can actually be a portal user, an unpaid user in the system that can register our consumed materials for us. And that will look like this. Now on this other screen here, if I go to my account for a vendor, they can click on manufacturing orders here and they can see this warehouse in number 16, which is ready. They can click on this and they can re register components to be subcontracted. So here we see that they've registered one component and this is done automatically, but if they needed to add additional products that they're consuming, they can do so as well. And this is just helpful for them to be able to interact with your system without being users, or if they just need to reference what they should be consuming for an order. Now on the back end of the system, I'll go back here. And what I'll do is we can record our components. We already have this preset to one, so I don't need to do anything. The system is gonna do that for us. And once I validate this document, the value of our inventory for our finished good is going to be the $100 for the service of the finished product plus the raw material. So let's go ahead and validate that and look at some of the valuation and product moves. If I click on valuation here, we're going to see that our unfinished product gets minus 50 as on our stock valuation layer, we're subtracting $50 worth of value. And in our finished product, we're adding $150, $50 from the unfinished product and $100 from the vendor services rendered. Now let's just verify that information by first, we're going to go into our uh, locations. We no longer have our unfinished product. In our valuation, our unfinished product is set to zero, but now our finished product is set to 150 for that one unit that we have on hand. And we have one unit of our finished product available for us. So let's take a look at those journal entries. We can do so from our valuation, where we look at our finished product and take a look at the journal entry here. And we'll see that our stock valuation automated has increased debited $150 our cost of production account is going to hold the $50 and this is the $50 that was rendered um, by consuming our raw material so we're consuming that unfinished product now this stock interim received account for $100 that's from the PO for the services okay 
And then of course our unfinished product, if we look down below our unfinished product here, this was from our stock valuation automated, credited $50 to reduce the inventory. And then we debited our cost of production to increase the cost of production account. All right, the last thing to do is to pay our bill for the services rendered. So we'll create a bill here, set a bill date, confirm this, and we'll look at our journal items. And we see that that stock interim received is going to get hit for or debited for $100 and our accounts payable for $100. So now let's look at that on our profit and loss statement or rather our balance sheet in accounting. We're gonna go to reports and we'll look at our balance sheet. And we see our cost of production is netted out between those two journal entries that we looked at. Our stock valuation automated is set at 290 here. And we can take a look at any of these by clicking and drilling into our general ledger. And that is essentially the subcontracting flow.